Hey, what's up everybody? How you doing? This is your coach Renz and I want to thank you for joining me right now. For everybody who subscribes to the channel, all my Patreons, everybody who's a member of my YouTube channel, as well as everyone who uh, watches on Facebook, but come over to YouTube and subscribe and hit the bell icon. All those who help by shopping at Uncle Renz Popcorn, I greatly appreciate your support. Uh, today we're going to be talking about love. Um, and it's very interesting because uh, about a week ago, I was reading and listening to a video about J. Krishnamurti. Uh, J. Krishnamurti. I'm probably saying the name a little bit incorrectly. But then just yesterday, while I'm listening to some other motivational things, I'm listening to some speeches by or conversations and interviews by Will Smith. And he happens to mention J. J. Krishnamurti as far as his thought process on love and the fact that we really don't know love we really don't we have had glimpses of it we've seen it but to translate it into how we live our lives has been the challenge it is probably more than likely the actual root of why we have so many divorces in the world and I really believe that we have to redefine love. And this is not something that I have perfected, far from it. This is something that even I myself work on, that I consciously think about, that I've seen uh, situations that demonstrate it. And it, it, when I do see it, it invokes something in me. It, 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 it burns me, it stabs me, but it also makes me smile, it makes me happy to see that it does exist in the way that it should. So what did Jay say? I'm gonna call him Jay, because I am not, Jay Krishna, because I'm gonna mess up the last name. So Jay Krishna talked about how love for everyone is in this paradigm. It is in a paradigm of desires and needs. And because it's in a paradigm of desires and needs, love becomes transactional. And that is what we have defined love as. Basically, if I do something for you that gives you pleasure, that makes you happy, that in, that makes you feel good about yourself and a good about your day, a good about your life, then you will love me. But if I don't do things that make you happy, that makes you feel great about your life, then you won't love me. So love becomes a transactional thing of if you fulfill my desires if you give me pleasures whether it's mental physical financial emotional if you give me these types of pleasures then i will give you my love and i will love you but if you do not then i won't love you and for most people that makes sense and for in a logical sense i can understand that that if a person is treating you improperly then why would you love them if a person is beating you, slapping you, kicking you, uh, causing you to be stressed out all the time, why would you still love them? If a person is not making you happy, why would you still love them? And that's where the crooks of it all is. I realize, and I've known this and you know this, but it became even more full circle to, or to me about a week or so ago, is that I cannot make anyone happy. I am not responsible for making anyone happy. It's an impossibility for me to make anyone happy. And in the same vein, it is an impossibility for anyone to make me happy, save myself. You see, all we can do is commit ourselves to a behavior that hopefully the other person will translate into happiness. It doesn't always work out though. How many times have you done something for someone and you expected them to be happy with that, but yet they weren't happy? How many times have you taken people places and you expect them to be happy, but they weren't happy? How many times have you gone out of your way to be something for someone and they still weren't happy? You can do everything in the world, but if a person decides that they're not going to be happy with that, or if that's just not what makes them happy, then they are just not going to be happy. Will Smith crystallized it 
in the sense that he talked about how his daughter taught him what real love is. And he, he his daughter likened it, I think she likened it to this, or he just realized it by watching his daughter. He didn't exactly express how. But he said that uh, love is like the gardener to the flower. You see, the gardener creates an environment for the flower to become and bloom into whatever the flower decides that it's going to be. What Jay Krishna was saying that instead of us allowing the flower to bloom, instead of us, when we put the environment around the person, around the flower, when we put the soil, we get the sun, we get the water, instead of us allowing it to bloom as it would want to bloom, we put a transaction on it that says that if I give you water, you must bloom this way. If I give you sunlight, you must bloom this way. If I place you in this soil, you must bloom this way. When we do that, that is not true love. That is transactional love. So anytime you have to do something, be something, create something, modify something, change something in order for someone to love you, then you are not in a position of love. That's not them giving love. That's not them understanding love. And we all fall very, very short of this. The One of the immediate times when I heard this, when I was studying this, watching this, and when I um, heard Will Smith talk about it, each time he talks about it, and even in right now, it immediately takes me to when my children were born. When my children were born, they didn't have to do anything for me to give them love. When my children were born, I, my goal was to put them in a situation to give them opportunities to allow them to be able to express themselves, to show them different um, opportunities in life. You know, where, whether I'm taking them to a, the Natural Museum or to the Federal Reserve Museum, whether we are taking uh, vacations in the mountains or vacations on the beaches or if we're taking home vacations, whether we're watching television together or going to the movies. If we're going to the park, no matter what it was, you know, lessons that I impart to my children, all these videos are really me imparting my wisdom, my knowledge and understanding for my children to grasp. But transactional would be for them to have to grasp it my way, for them to have to develop into what I want them to develop into. But when I look at my children, I look at all three of my naturally born children that I was so in part, part of their growth and... I recognize how all three of them have bloomed differently and I love them genuinely all differently but the same. I have more in common with one daughter than the other daughter but then with the other daughter I have more things of similarity than with my son or the other daughter and it's a mismatch, a hodgepodge of all of this that demonstrates that my love for them wasn't transactional. They didn't have to do something. Now, do I expect them to respect me as their father? Yes. Do I expect them to show me some kindness, consideration? Yes. Do I expect certain things? Of course, because those things are the environment that I need when dealing with father, daughter, father, son. Those are the environment I need for them to allow me to bloom. And I was contemplating this morning while I was um, getting myself together how... One of my goals in life was to be the father I wish I had. To be the father I wish that I had. That was one of my goals. And I was thinking about my son. And I was thinking, like, he should appreciate that even though me and his mother got a divorce, I never left him. You see, I grew up, my father left. My grandfather wasn't there. I, I rarely saw my father uh, until I was about 25. 25, well, actually about 27. I rarely saw him. So he wasn't instrumental in my life, though. I, and being the father I wish my, being the father I wish I had, even in divorce, I made sure that I stayed in the same city instead of moving to another state. I made sure that I was active in their lives. Their lives. I saw them all the time. I was there at their sporting events, plays. Um, I'm there to pick them up. We're going on. we now they're all adults. So let me take you to dinner. I'm, I made sure I'm there. And I thought that my son should appreciate that. My daughter should appreciate that. But then I realized, I thought about him, and I realized, how could my son appreciate that? Whereas what should be, and this is what, um, when my son wakes up, when I call him, I will impart to him that 
I am a building block for you to be the father to your children whenever you have them, for you to be the father to your children that you wish that I was. Because you can't appreciate the father that I am to you in regards to your grandfather because you don't know, you didn't experience it. So be the father you wish that I was. Take this as a stepping stone. And your kids will take it as a, and teach your kids to take it as a stepping stone to be even more of the father that they wish you were. It's a continued growth. And love is that. It's a continued growth. And I really came to a point this morning where I said to myself, I can't force anybody to feel the love that I give. All I can do and I can do my best is to cultivate an environment around them that makes them realize that I love them. If they grasp that and make that into their happiness, then that is upon them. I can't force it. I can't force them to be anything that I want them to be. It's difficult. Don't get me wrong. Because you do want people to respond the way you respond to things. You want people to respond a certain way to how you are towards them. You do want that. And you desire that. And it will frustrate you. And you will get into arguments about it. But you have to, at some point, come to a realization, even in the midst of the argument, or in the midst of the uh, hurt emotions, or in the midst of the frustration, that you cannot force anyone to be anything but themselves. That whatever environment that you placed around them, they choose the, the flower that they will bloom into. Now, yes, sometimes you, oftentimes you can create what they bloom into. If you are harsh to a person, you will create something. If you're kind to someone, if you're loving to someone, if you're thoughtful to someone, but they still decide that that's not enough or that's not it, you can't do any more than that. But if they decide that it is, then that's great. And that is the similarity. That is coming into harmony with one another. And when we come into that kind of harmony with one another, then we have beautiful relationships. We have great, grand relationships. Because the relationship is not based on transactions. The relationship is based on you are creating an environment that I translate into love. And I will say this. If a person is creating an environment that does not translate into love, it translates into frustration. It translates into argument. It translates into fighting. It translates into physical abuse. It translates into mental abuse. It translates into financial abuse. Then... As in all things, unlike the tree who cannot change its environment at will, you have the ability to change your environment at will. If a person is not making you feel love, if a person is making you feel the opposite of love, change your environment. Either there's something inside yourself you need to change that you're just not receptive to it, recognizing it, or you battle against it, or you have some previous traumas, or just recognize that it's just not for you. It's just not for you. And that's okay. Because what we have to not do is allow the judgment of other people to dictate how we live our lives. Even your spouse's judgments can't dictate how you live your life. If your spouse's judgment is causing you that frustration, that anguish, that, that issue, then you cannot allow them to dictate your life. And you certainly can't allow your parents. You can't allow your friends. You can't allow people on the street. You can't allow people on YouTube commenting to, dict to justify your life based on their judgment. Because if you do, you'll be living a life that they've decided for you and you will never be happy. You will never be happy living your life based on the judgments of other people. So if you're going, just like I said in my change video, and I'll post it up here later. If a person, if you're going to change something about yourself, change it because you decide that it's the best thing for you to do. If you're going to change your perspective on how a person is acting towards you, the environment they've cultivated for you, then change that because you decide that that's best for you, not because of their judgment or their judgmental behavior, or how they feel about it. You may not have the capacity to make someone happy, or at least a specific someone happy. Let me be correct in that. You may have not have the capacity to make someone specific happy, but you have the capacity to make another person happy. In the same way, you can make one of your children happy, you can piss off the other child, but you're being the exact same person, creating and cultivating the same environment, but they blossom differently. 
and some can receive, some cannot. So as I was editing the video, um, this video, there was a thought that came to my mind and it may not fit at all in flow of this video. Uh, it'll fit in subject matter, but as far as flow of words, uh, that's probably why I would add some title cards before and after or some type of transaction transition. Uh, but I had the, the thought when it comes to, or an additional thought, an example that I wanted to share with you guys, because when it comes to us loving someone and, and, and how we can love them purely, instead of it being transactional, I had the, the thought process of birds. Birth. I love you guys know I love looking at nature and seeing you know the universe at play in nature and when when you watch birds it, during mating season when you watch birds uh, oftentimes what you see build the nest builders are the males the males are the primary ones that build the nest and you will see all the uh, the same type of bird all building their nest and the males are going around frantically and they're, they're, they're getting straws they're getting whatever they can find to build their nest and once the nest is built and it's mating season then the all the male birds start crying out chirping 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 hey hey i've built my nest i've built my nest i've built my nest and the the female bird what she does not do is come over and start judging the nest that the male bird built she may come to a, she doesn't come to this particular bird over here and be like, hey, you got a nice nest, but yours is a circle. And I don't really like circles. I like squares. But if you would change your nest and build it into a square, then I'll be with you. The birds don't do this. They don't, they don't, they don't function that way. Nature doesn't function that way. The way nature functions is that if the female bird likes a rectangle or a square nest, but this bird built a circle, she never shows up. She goes to the square. She goes to the rectangle. She goes to the bird that built an environment that, that she translates into love. And that's how we have to function. We have to function like birds that say, you know, for myself, I'm going to build this environment. This is the environment that, that, that I can give love, that I can show love, that I can demonstrate love. And the idea is that we must attract those who looks and relates what we have done in an understanding of love. And that will make them happy. They, they will feel love. But when we attract those or those who come to us and they say, you built a circle, I need a rectangle, build a rectangle. Then we are falling prey to the judgments of other people. And when we fall prey to the judgments of other people, it inhibits us from truly being ourselves and building the circle that we need to build. And it forces us to build the rectangle that is foreign to us. And although she may be comfortable in it, we will never be comfortable in the rectangle because it's not our way. It's not our energetic flow. So we have to let the female bird, she will just automatically go to the rectangle or the square. So we cannot change who we are. We cannot change who we are based on the judgments of other people. Because when we do that, we lose ourselves in the entire scope of what, we, what we're doing. So this has just been an addition to the original video. So I hope you guys um, really take this video to heart. This is a video that is just as much for me as it is for you. And, and, and especially for my children. But... Um, it's something that we all must strive for. It's something we all should work for. It's something we should all develop into. Because love is the greatest gift. It is truly the greatest gift. Because love is an amazing, amazing thing. And I don't care if you've been married one time, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times. Whenever you find it, whenever it's present, whenever you have it, it's worth the chase to get it. If you don't think it's worth the chase to get it, then you don't think you deserve it. But it is worth the chase. And do not care about the judgment of other people of how you get it, how many times you try to get it, how long you chase for it. It doesn't matter. I've seen people who are 90 years old, 100 years old, getting married. They keep chasing love. And it's worth the chase. Out of everything in life, that's worth the chase. So y'all have a great day. 
Remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good vibrations, good journey.